Radiant Instinct, MI6, MI8, MI25. Start with what these were trying to do. Bring general purpose graphics silicon into the data center as accelerators for machine learning and high performance compute before AMD split graphics and compute into separate product lines. GCN means graphics core next, the older AMD GPU architecture family. The goal here was simple, sell passively cooled cards that fit in servers, run at consistent power limits, and deliver dense math at different precisions, like FP32 and FP16. FP32 means 32-bit single precision floating point. FP16 means 16-bit half precision floating point, which trades accuracy for speed and throughput. High bandwidth memory means stacked memory directly on the package for very high bandwidth. PCI Express is the server I.O. slot these cards use. Yes, the names are thrilling. Radeon Instinct MI6 was the conservative option built on the Polaris 10 chip. It targeted inference and general compute, where you needed lots of cards per rack without melting the airflow. It shipped with 16 gigabytes of GDDR5, around 224 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, a board power around 150 watts, and peak compute around 5.7 teraflops at FP32, and the same at FP16, because Polaris did not accelerate half precision. That last point matters. On MI6, you did not get a speed up by switching to FP16. You saved memory, not time. The card used PCI Express 3.0 and passive cooling for servers. Radeon Instinct MI8 was the short short, dense Fiji chip option, essentially a data center version of the compact enthusiast board of that era. It used the first generation of high bandwidth memory, 4 gigabytes of it, for roughly 500 plus gigabytes per second of bandwidth. Peak math was about 8.2 teraflops at FP32, and also 8.2 at FP16 because, like MI6, there was no special half-precision acceleration. It came in around 175 watts, again designed for inference and mixed compute, rather than large-scale training. Bandwidth was excellent, capacity was not, which limited massive models, but made sense for compact, low-latency deployments. Radeon Instinct MI25 was the step change. Based on the Vega 10 chip, it introduced fast half-precision math, sometimes marketed as rapid packed math. That let FP16 run at roughly double the FP32 rate. The card paired 16 gigabytes of second-generation high-bandwidth memory with about 480-plus gigabytes per second of bandwidth, and a passive board design rated up to roughly 300 watts. Peak numbers were about 12.3 teraflops at FP32 and about 24.6 teraflops at FP16, with double precision around 0.768 teraflops. In plain English, MI25 finally made half precision worth it on AMD for neural network training at the time, which is why you saw it pitched for deep learning rather than just classical compute. Design lesson from this trio, MI6 and MI8, were transitional accelerators that established server form factors and power envelopes, while MI25 delivered the first meaningful half-precision speedup, higher capacity with second-generation high-bandwidth memory, and the thermal headroom to matter in racks. This is the practical bridge from a GPU in a server to a server built around accelerators. Radeon Instinct MI50 and MI60 The Radeon Instinct MI50 and MI60 marked AMD's first true leap into modern data center silicon. Both were built on the Vega 20 architecture, a refined version of Graphics Core Next, and were the first graphics processors for servers manufactured on a 7 nanometer process by TSMC. This single change meant higher transistor density, lower power per operation, and dramatically improved thermal efficiency, all key for data centers that run flat out 24 hours a day. The MI60 was the flagship. It came with 32 gigabytes of second generation high bandwidth memory, connected over a massive 4096 bit bus, pushing up to about 1 terabyte per second of bandwidth. The smaller MI50 used 16 gigabytes but shared the same memory type and bus architecture. Both supported the newly introduced PCI Express 4.0 interface, effectively doubling the throughput available compared to the older generation. This mattered because feeding these accelerators with data was often the bottleneck, not just the raw compute inside the chip. Compute performance was equally aggressive for the time. The MI60 could reach about 14.7 teraflops in single precision and nearly 30 teraflops in half precision, while double precision performance hit around 7.4 teraflops, unusually high for a GPU, since most prioritized the lighter formats used in AI. The MI50 trailed slightly but shared the same DNA. Together, they were AMD's first accelerators that truly looked competitive for both scientific workloads and machine learning. However, they still lacked any dedicated tensor processing hardware. The specialized math blocks NVIDIA had already introduced. So while AMD could compete in throughput and efficiency,
efficiency, it could not yet match the tensor-specific acceleration for deep learning training. In short, MI50 and MI60 represented AMD's transition from adapting gaming GPUs to designing true compute-first accelerators. They introduced key technologies like 7 nanometer fabrication, full ECC support and high bandwidth memory, and the PCI Express 4.0 interface. The platform foundation was finally there. What came next would separate compute from graphics entirely. Radeon Instinct MI100. This is where AMD drew a hard line between graphics and compute. The MI100 was the first accelerator built on the new cDNA architecture, short for Compute DNA, which dropped all the traditional graphics hardware. No raster engines, no display controllers, no shaders meant for rendering, just raw math units tuned for machine learning and high-performance computing. Manufactured again on a 7 nanometer process, MI100 introduced matrix cores. These are dedicated hardware blocks for mixed precision matrix operations, the backbone of deep learning. They supported data types like FP16, BF16, and INT8, meaning you could balance precision and performance based on the workload. In simpler terms, the MI100 was the first AMD chip that could train neural networks efficiently without wasting cycles pretending to be a GPU for graphics. Memory was 32 gigabytes of HP. HBM2, running across a 4096-bit interface for roughly 1.2 terabytes per second of bandwidth. The card connected via PCI Express 4.0 and could scale across multiple accelerators using AMD's Infinity Fabric Interconnect, letting servers chain GPUs together without traditional bottlenecks. The compute throughput was enormous for its time, but the architectural shift mattered more than the raw numbers. CDNA was no longer part of Radeon graphics. It was a separate family for compute only. Radeon and Instinct MI-200 series. Then came the Instinct MI-200 series, the MI-210, MI-250, and MI-250X, based on CDNA2. This generation changed everything, both technically and symbolically. It was the first GPU family to adopt a multi-chip module design, or what most people now call chiplets. Instead of one massive piece of silicon, AMD used multiple dies on the same package, each linked by Infinity Fabric. This allowed them to scale compute resources without running into yield or power limits that plague monolithic chips. The results were staggering. The MI250X delivered nearly 383 teraflops and half and brain-floating point precision modes, around 48 teraflops in double precision vector math, and about 96 teraflops in double precision matrix math. For context, that's roughly an order of magnitude higher than the MI100 in some operations. The memory subsystem used second-generation high-bandwidth memory, HBM2E, pushing around around 3.2 terabytes per second. These accelerators didn't just exist on spec sheets. They powered the Frontier Supercomputer, the first officially recognized exascale system, capable of exceeding one exaflops of sustained compute performance. Frontier's compute nodes used MI250X accelerators alongside AMD EPYC CPUs, all connected by Infinity Fabric in a fully coherent architecture. That system alone proved AMD could compete not just in GPUs, but in entire HPC ecosystems. From this point on, the Instinct name stopped being an experiment and became a cornerstone of modern supercomputing. CDNA had found its home. Instinct MI-300A With the Instinct MI-300A, AMD stopped thinking of the GPU and CPU as separate components. This was the first accelerated processing unit for the data center, a single package that combined 24 Zen 4 CPU cores with a full CDNA 3GPU, sharing one unified pool of high band with memory 3. The idea was to remove the traditional bottleneck between CPU and GPU memory spaces. Instead of copying data back and forth across a slow bus, both sides could access the same memory directly. The MI300A used 128 gigabytes of HBM 3 with up to about 5.2 terabytes per second of aggregate bandwidth. That memory sits on the same interposer as the CPU and GPU tiles, all linked by Infinity Fabric and all cooled as a single unit. In practice, this meant a supercomputer node could handle simulation and training workloads entirely within one package, without PCI Express or external memory controllers slowing things down. This design powers the United States Department of Energy's El Capitan supercomputer, the successor to Frontier. In El Capitan, each compute node runs multiple MI300A units, forming a dense, all-AMD environment where every byte of data moves within a unified memory domain. It is one of the largest real-world tests of heterogeneous compute
compute in history, a direct challenge to the long-standing model of separate CPUs and GPUs. The MI300A was built on TSMC's 5 nanometer and 6 nanometer processes for its different tiles. With a total transistor count above 150 billion, each package stacked multiple compute chiplets on top of a central base die, a 3D stacked design that shows how far AMD's packaging technology has evolved since the early Vega cards, Instinct MI300X. While the MI300A merged compute types, the MI300X focused purely on GPU acceleration for AI training and inference. It used the same cDNA3 architecture but omitted the CPU cores to maximize GPU density and memory capacity. The MI300X featured 192 gigabytes of HBM3 memory, a massive capacity aimed directly at large language models that cannot fit on smaller accelerators. Bandwidth was roughly 5.2 terabytes per second, matching the MI300A, but applied entirely to GPU workloads. It supported a broad range of numerical formats, FP8, INT8, FP16, and BF16, the key types used in AI training and inference. Lower precision types like FP8 and INT8 allow enormous throughput gains because they store less data per operation, letting the GPU process more elements simultaneously. Each MI300X module drew about 750 watts, designed for liquid-cooled data center racks. AMD's Infinity Fabric linked eight of these GPUs per server node in systems like the AMD Instinct platform, giving direct peer-to-peer -peer communication between GPUs without a separate host bottleneck. In pure math, the MI300X delivers up to about 1.3 petaflops of FP8 performance per 8 GPU node, squarely targeting NVIDIA's Hopper H, 100 and similar platforms. Architecturally, CDNA3 introduced improvements in matrix core efficiency, memory compression, and scheduling, all optimized for transformer-based models. Unlike earlier designs that simply emphasized raw FLOP counts, the MI300X was built to sustain long-running AI training sessions with minimal data starvation. It also supported multi-instance GPU partitioning, allowing several models or users to share one physical accelerator without interfering with each other. In short, the MI300A fused CPU and GPU into one brain, while the MI300X scaled GPU compute to industrial proportions. Both showed AMD's intent, unify compute, scale it massively, and remove every slow link between memory and math. Instinct MI-3, 2, 5X. The Instinct MI325X was not a new architecture, but rather a memory and efficiency refresh of the MI300X, built still on CDNA3. It introduced next-generation high-bandwidth memory 3E, the faster and more thermally efficient revision of HBM3. The headline specification was capacity, 256 gigabytes of HBM3E per GPU, the largest single-package memory pool AMD had ever shipped. Bandwidth increased to roughly 6 terabytes per second, up from about 5.2 on the MI300X. That bandwidth boost, while numerically small, matters significantly when training massive transformer models that saturate the memory bus constantly. Every percent of throughput translates to faster token processing and shorter wall clock training times. Beyond the raw specs, the MI325X refined thermals and interconnect reliability for sustained operation in large GPU clusters. AI workloads are memory hungry, but they're also communication hungry. Accelerators must constantly exchange weights and gradients across dozens or hundreds of nodes. To support that, AMD tuned the Infinity Fabric interconnects for lower latency and better scaling, allowing system integrators to connect racks of MI325X GPUs with more predictable performance. In practical deployments, the MI325X began appearing in 2025 across AI cloud providers that were expanding capacity for large language model training, fine-tuning, and inference. The combination of dense HB M3E memory and high interconnect bandwidth allowed each GPU to hold entire model shards without offloading to slower system memory. The result was reduced communication overhead and more efficient scaling across clusters, the same kind of architectural tuning that made NVIDIA's H100 and H200 platform successful. While not revolutionary, the MI325X cemented AMD's presence in high-memory AI accelerators. It proved that the company could iterate fast, improving practical performance without waiting for a new core architecture. Architecture. Instinct MI350 series. The next architectural milestone is the Instinct.
distinct MI350 family, built on CDNA4. This generation continues AMD's focus on specialized AI compute and introduces several key upgrades across memory, bandwidth, and supported data formats. The MI350X and MI355X models both feature up to 288 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory 3E with approximately 8 terabytes per second of total bandwidth, a massive jump that effectively doubles throughput compared to the MI300 generation. CDNA4 also refines AMD's matrix engines, adding support for new ultra-low precision numerical types, such as MX, F, P, 6 and MXFP4. These formats are mixed precision floating points that retain reasonable dynamic range while using fewer bits per value, designed specifically for large-scale AI training and inference, where full precision is unnecessary. The core layout also changes. CDNA4 increases the number of compute units, enhances cache structures to reduce dependency on external memory, and improves scheduling for multi-node parallel workloads. It is optimized to run at lower voltage per operation, improving power power efficiency at cluster scale. In terms of performance scaling, CDNA4 platforms leverage the latest generation of Infinity Fabric links to tie together thousands of GPUs inside data centers. Each MI350X or MI355X can operate either independently or as part of massive interconnected topologies used for foundation model training. FP8 and FP4 workloads see some of the largest gains, the formats that dominate transformer model acceleration today. The MI350 series is expected to anchor AMD's AI lineup throughout 2025, with performance in multi-petaflop ranges per server cluster and efficiency targets aimed directly at competing with NVIDIA's Blackwell architecture. AMD positions this series as the platform for frontier-scale AI systems, capable of trillion-parameter training and real-time inference at extreme throughput. System Scaleouts By 2025, AMD's Instinct accelerators were no longer single-card products. They were building blocks for entire rack-scale AI systems. Large deployments of MI325X and MI355X units filled liquid-cooled enclosures designed specifically for FP8 and FP4 precision training. Each rack could host hundreds of terabytes of aggregate high-bandwidth memory and deliver multiple petaflops of sustained compute performance. These systems form the backbone of industrial-scale AI training clusters, from open-weight research labs to enterprise cloud services. FP FP8 and FP4 precision levels are now standard for training efficiency, reducing both energy cost and compute time without catastrophic accuracy loss. Infinity Fabric interconnects and AMD's ROCM software stack link all GPUs into one unified compute fabric, allowing distributed training across thousands of accelerators as if they were one machine. In short, AMD's AI hardware portfolio has evolved from rebranded gaming GPUS to purpose-built, chiplet-based, heterogeneous compute systems running the world's largest models. The roadmap extends further still, and the next step is already public. Instinct MEI 400 Series AMD's upcoming Instinct MI 400 Series, based on the next-generation CDNA architecture, is expected in 2026. Official details are limited, but internal roadmaps and early disclosures point to further advances in packaging density, interconnect bandwidth, and new low-precision math formats designed specifically for large multimodal AI models. CD CDNA Next will likely continue AMD's unified compute vision with flexible chiplet designs that can pair different GPU tiles, CPU tiles, or specialized accelerators on a shared interposer. Expected memory technology is HBM4, with projected bandwidths beyond 10 terabytes per second per GPU and even larger on-package memory capacities. The MI400 line will continue scaling Infinity Fabric for multi-rack deployments, effectively extending cluster performance without requiring custom network networking layers. While full performance figures are not yet public, the focus is clear. Optimize for AI efficiency rather than raw FLOPS, improve power per compute metrics, and integrate software level support for the next generation of open and enterprise AI frameworks. The CDNA Next Era will complete AMD's transformation into a top-tier player in AI compute infrastructure. That is the complete evolution, from early GCN-based Radeon Instinct cards to unified memory superchips and petabyte-scale AI systems, each generation designed to close the gap between bandwidth, precision, and sheer compute density. There's a great video on the screen now. Don't miss it.